So, I used to be that kid who couldn't remember formulae, dates or even where I left my keys. But then something changed. I found some amazing memory techniques and there came a time where I was a professor at an MBA institute and I could go into a lecture room full of 75 students and once they finished introducing themselves, I could recap all the 75 names in one go. How did that go? Hey everyone, this is Chetna and you're watching Chet Chat. It's a Friday today and we will talk about those six powerful techniques to help you sharpen your memory and some bonus tips right at the end. And this content is also available as a podcast on Skill Up with Chet Chat, available exclusively on Spotify. And now let's understand memory. We have two kinds of memory. One is a long-term memory. Imagine this to be our wardrobe where everything is stored in its proper place, but we need to put in some effort to access it. And the second is our working memory. Imagine this to be a bag that you carry around with you everywhere you go. And as you move through the day, you keep stuffing things into this little bag, but it runs out of space soon. This explains why you may be able to remember the lyrics of your favorite high school song, but you don't seem to remember why you're standing in this room. Of course, the best thing about a poor memory is that you never hold any grudges or that you can laugh at the same joke twice. So anyway, technique number one, attention. Say you're introduced to three people, John, Sally, Rahul. Wait, was it Sally or Sarah? You weren't paying attention, right? So when I got into this class full of 75 students and the goal was to remember each one's name, I was paying full attention when they said their name. If for some reason, maybe, I didn't hear it well or I was in doubt, I would ask them to repeat their name. Sometimes I would repeat it back as well to them to get confirmation and also to tell my mind that this is important information. When you want to remember the name of maybe transgenic bacteria or homo polymer, read the words carefully and say them aloud. Transgenic, related to something you already know. Transgenic, trans maybe relates to transform and genic could relate to genes. Command your focus, tell it exactly where to go. Technique number two, chunking. Example, when I'm trying to remember 75 names in one go, I create small chunks of four to five names at a time. For example, A-A-A-S-S, five students on one table. Their names begin with these five letters. And then the next chunk could be laser or something else. While recalling the entire list, it's easier to pull out chunks which are interlinked. Now I've used the technique of mnemonics here to create my chunks. The M in mnemonics is silent but it stands for memory. I have some more ideas on how you can create these chunks so wait for the bonus tip right at the end. Now remember the time when you were learning to drive a car? It seemed awfully hard to back up. What do you do first? Look into the rear view mirror, put the reverse gear first or put a hand across the other seat before that when do I release the brake and how slowly? You were all worked up. Your working memory was overloaded. And what happens today when we are driving? You almost unthinkingly reverse park, right? It becomes like a computer subroutine. Use the same principle. Create a library of interlinked chunks like uh, steps of differentiation or sequence of Mughal rulers and your working memory will easily be able to pull out the relevant chunk and use it. But make sure you use it, else you will lose it. Now before we move on to technique number three, yes, it's shout out time. And today's shout out goes to Mama who says he would like to be an English teacher and a confident public speaker. More power to you, Mama. And if you also want a shout out in my next video, then leave me a comment below with the hashtag Chet Chatters. Technique number three, learn it the hard way. Now, I'm a gold medalist from XLRI Jamshedpur, where the course was intense and we were always short on time. One thing I observed was that our final ranks were not correlated with the number of hours that we studied. And I found that the most common study habits of students are in fact the worst. Underlining, highlighting, rereading and cramming. All of these create an illusion of mastery, but all the information gathered this way will soon be forgotten. That is why they say study smart, not hard. 
I found that these three study techniques were the best for developing a razor sharp long term memory. One, testing. One hour of testing teaches you more than one hour of reading. When we're learning a new song, sport, music or language, we repeat the same verse, chord, shot or sentence often, don't we? And we try to recall it ourselves without looking at the source material. Same way for studies. Two is spaced repetition. Revise old material after a few days. And technique number three of developing good long-term memory is interleaving the practice of one skill or topic with another. Mix up your material. If you're doing algebra, maybe mix up with coordinate geometry or take up physics next. If you're studying literature, mix it up with history and then poetry. Now let's move on to technique number four of developing a razor sharp memory. Picture it. And that is a big secret about our long term memory. Remember the wardrobe we compared it with? Full of clothes, books, keys, papers and gadgets. As soon as you open your wardrobe or cupboard, what do you notice? Pictures stuck on the door or colourful clothes and bright things. A gorilla is one thing. But a gorilla wearing a floral red shirt doing a tango is quite another thing. Create pictures, watch videos and if you add movement to the vivid imagery, it creates more stickiness. Technique number five, insert yourself. Two years ago, when you had a weekend adventure with your friends, you're still able to narrate the incident with the greatest amount of detail to everyone, aren't you? The best way to make visual information really stick is to imagine yourself in the problem. Imagine yourself inside a chemistry lab where a copper sulfate crystal perhaps was showing up in a vibrant blue color. Next, what did you add? Your friend gave you some chemical? What was the color of his shirt that you wore? Or maybe what was your friend wearing? And what was the color of the chemical in the test tube? Give names to your characters and imagine yourself in that world. Technique number six, rest builds muscles. Those of you that go to the gym already know that rest allows muscles to rebuild and grow, which is why your trainer will ask you to come on alternate days. The brain too is like a muscle. It also needs rest to rebuild. So don't study for 16 hours at a stretch just before an exam. It'll actually ruin your performance. Study, take a break, study, take a break and get a good night's sleep of eight hours if you want a cracker jacker memory. For a razor sharp memory, study difficult concepts, challenge your brain with complex problems, don't instantly look at the solution, let your mind struggle with the problems, shut your books, Try to recall and remember to give it enough sleep and rest to recover and build. Build a routine and stick to it. As Paulo Coelho said, if you think adventure is dangerous, try routine. It's lethal. Read, process, rest, recall, repeat. Back to the 75 names. I was continuously recalling them in order. Example, if the 13th student was introducing themselves, mentally I was recalling the first 12 names and so on, till I reached the 75th student, by which time I had recalled all of the names on an average 37.5 times. There are no shortcuts, it turns out, to creating a solid long-term memory. Remember, calm seas never made a good sailor. The memory palace technique also works effectively because it uses visual spatial memory but I will not explain it here since I've discussed it in detail in a previous video and I'll drop a link for you below. And now for the bonus tip. Make up songs, cook up metaphors, handwriting something or using flashcards also help build recall. Connect new information to something you already know like the chemical bonds of benzene might resemble monkeys holding hands and tails. And teach the information to your favorite stuffed toy or imaginary student. Don't forget that sleep is very important in anchoring these new ideas and all of that you are learning. In the meantime, remember to press that subscribe button and enjoy the learning process. See you next Friday.